Ladies and gentlemen, come gather round, come gather round, come gather around. Today, we're putting some paint on the 61 Chevy Apache. Woo! Boy, I've been waiting a long time for this. Lots of videos, lots of work leading up to this. I sure hope it looks good, because I haven't done it yet. Unlike the last couple of videos where I did the intro after I did the video. All right, let's go! So if you've been looking forward to this video as long as I've been looking forward to it, I'm proud of you, because I, I secretly haven't really been looking forward to it. However, I sprayed some more Raptor bed liner to the underside of a fender. I did the inner fenders in mouse gray, which is the closest thing to engine gray by Ford. And then we're sanding and putting an extra coat of epoxy primer on the fenders because I broke through in the sanding, and then I'm going to sand it some more, and then I'm going to have to break through it again. Oh, and I'm going to add some filler and I'm going to whole, add a whole bunch of stuff here. However, you know, have I mentioned how much I like auto body? Wishing I had something else to do with my life. I'm not McLoving it, let me tell you. Not enjoying body work. Reevaluate your life. This is not my thing. I'm moving on. I can't stand doing body work. Good luck. Not loving it though. I hate doing body work. So really, how bad can it be? I mean, I've, I've got a little bit of a taste of doing body work and I can spray some primer and I can lay down some filler. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? I'll add some links up above to the different sections uh, of repair that I've done, where I can fit them, and uh, we'll touch on some of the stuff that we do in this video here. So with a little pointers from my friend Jeff Thiessen at Trendsetter Automotive, um, I'm going to change the way I'm doing this, hopefully to make it a little bit faster. At this, at this point, I'm stopping. I do want to point out this. I picked up a bucket of this filler. I'm not sponsored, but I have been using Evercoat's Cheap 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 Filler. Wow, the difference between this and the cheap stuff. I will never buy the cheap stuff again. This is by far a better filler. Had I been using this filler eons ago, I might have actually enjoyed bodywork. Haha. <laughs> I'm going to put the epoxy back on over top of the filler that I've done, uh, just so we have a sealed epoxy surface. Then, the next day, I'm going to add this stuff. This is like a high build 2K two-part um, primer. In theory, this builds high enough and then I can sand the thickness of this to get rid of any imperfections in the bed and the fenders and eventually the whole rest of the cab. Uh, because with this, if I sand through and then touch the epoxy, I can stop. Whereas when I sand through the epoxy, I have to re-epoxy the thing. So this is making a bit more sense. It's like blast it, epoxy it, fill up the nasty stuff. Probably could epoxy it again, but definitely put down the 2K high build slick sand. And then I'll probably do epoxy again just to seal everything in and then spray color. With, hopefully this will be faster. It is a little bit expensive though, but uh, I'm running out of time. So since I'm running out of time, I think I'm gonna refabricate the, or fabricate the spare tire holder. Reason for this is this used to be a long bed step side and the step side fender that carries a spare tire is different between the, um, short bed and the long bed, but I'm not interested in buying a whole nother fender for this thing. So, and if you have the right size diameter wheel, you can squeeze a spare tire in there. However, uh, if I'm gonna be laying down some primer, uh, I need to know where the holes go to mount this thing so that they can be primed inside there. And I've, I need to know where the holes go. I need to know what the bracket looks like and I need to mount the wheel. Uh, so we put it together. I ground out all the rivets. There it is. Looks robust. You could probably pull a house down with it. I know it looks big, but it is uh, holding a bigger wheel further out from the bed. Laying down the epoxy. I love the smell of epoxy primer. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, two, I think two nice gratuitous coats. I'll let that sit for a day. And then we're putting down the slick sand. I, I've, this is my first time spraying slick sand. I like it, but I like it retroactively. At the time, uh, this stuff sets up in the gun, like it cures in the gun within 15 minutes at room temperature. 
and it's warmer than room temperature outside. And I was kind of learning, you really need to lay this thing down quick. This gun it was a Princess Auto Special. I think I paid 40 bucks, and it has a 2.3 millimeter tip, and you need a boogie. Um, I think I even ended up taking out the filter inside the gun because it was plugging that thing up pretty quick. Uh, and then I need to let the slick sand cure for about three days. I have used high build polyester primers in the past that were not a 2K primer and you lay it down but you really need it to cure for like a week or two or uh, three months or a year because you, you think it's done shrinking as it cures and then you sand it and then it shrinks into the sanding marks underneath. So the 2K stuff should set up pretty good. Uh, Jeff Thiessen suggests let it sit for at least three days to shrink as much as it will and uh, we get to it. So since I can't do nothing, I might as well prep the cab for its coat of uh, primer and slick sand and whatnot. One of the nice things about laying down a black primer is it is kind of its own guide coat to help you see what's going on. Notice the front of the bed here. This was the one that way back when I shortened the bed, I hammered this thing all back into as straight as I could get it. And I actually got it really decently straight. And the slick sand really helped make that thing nice too. This whole bed was just hammered. They were chucking everything, underhand, overhand, sideways. I think they put it under a rock fall. I don't know. It, it was just mushroomed out and everything. And it's still not perfect. But uh, the slick sand really helped smooth this thing out. Um, one of the advantages of using the slick sand is instead of having a whole bunch of applications of filler with varying degrees of hardness, you're just putting down one big uniform layer. Um, if you were to try to patch it all together and try to make it perfect with different applications of filler, uh, you're going to chase it forever and by the time you're done, you might as well just put a skim coat of filler on it. Well, slick sand is a skim coat of filler that comes out of a gun. I learned in sanding that um, it seems to be really hard on my body. It's like there's, there's sanding muscles that I haven't been using, and it really took its toll on me. It was unexpected. Hi, my name's Greg Wellwood. You might remember me from such episodes as Daddy's Spine Goes Crack Crack and I Can't Feel My Legs Anymore. I don't know what it is about working on this 61 Chevy pickup, but oh my gosh, it is kicking my butt. And why, when my butt is really being kicked, I like to use Tylenol, extra strength, because old man muscle comes with a price. It's called painkillers. I'm not sponsored by Tylenol, but Tylenol, if you're listening, I wouldn't mind some free samples. Back to the show. So flat paint hides a multitude of sins, and one of the things you're just gonna discover when you try to paint it glossy is you'll find all of your mistakes. So. When you spray it with whatever primer or whatever you're going to use, um, I saw a YouTube video a guy was just using a paint stick with um, sandpaper. And I like this because it could stops me from being really heavy handed and I have to use fingertips and lightly gently sand. So I sand in a bunch of different positions, diagonally or whatever, and you'll start to find the high spots. Um, you can get rid of the high spots a couple ways, or you could just put down so much paint and then keep sanding it to fill all of the low spots with uh, primer. Uh, if it's a gentle persuader, this was my old smacker, but the end broke, so I bought another one, which I don't like as much. It's not as heavy, but it's probably gentler because it's a bigger tip. came with a brass and aluminum ends, which I'm not likely going to use. I want plastic. Also, made out of a file, ground all nice and smooth. This is just a slapper, and you can get in there and slap this and try to work it down really kind of gently. This is a really good way to go, it takes a while. If there are point issues, you could use a body hammer. Uh, this is just my little smacking hammer that I ground to fit a place, and then I just have a piece of metal that I ground to a point, and I can just give it a little smack where I need it to, to uh, take down any points that are a bit high. Uh, I use that in a couple places. Uh, usually better to pound the thing out. So just a piece of three quarter inch A hammer. I do have body hammers, none of them are here. I did find the most success was with the slapper. And then to see if you got it going right, just get a ruler, a piece of flat metal, and you can put it on here. And then 
rock this thing down and it should go fairly smooth. And it kind of, I can feel there's a flat spot right there. Duh. And I can feel a little bit of a flat spot here. Duh. I've got two high spots. So I'm going to build that up with some uh, 2K slick sand to give this a lot of fill and then sand it to try and get this thing so it rocks nice and, nice and smooth. So this should be able to just go down the curve and not feel any flats. So you can kind of rock this back and forth. And if it kind of rocks into a spot, you know you've got a flat. Uh, this is a 12 inch ruler. I'm pretty sure I have an 18 inch ruler. Uh, got big problems. They sell big rulers. This one's four feet long. So I can rock this all the way along the hood and see if it moves smoothly. It's actually an issue right here, so I may have to slap that down a bit more. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Probably should have done better body finishing before I get into this, but uh, here I am. I may have mentioned I don't like body work. This doesn't have any primer on it yet. That's not true. This doesn't have any filler on it yet. It's all just sheet metal work and it's close uh, but once it's all glossy you're going to see all the defects so defect remover to the rescue this has a couple nice things talc styrene acetone magnesite trimethylpropane triacrylate titanium dioxide crystalline silica silica is not good for your lungs and mineral spirits uh, none of which you can find on your grocery shelves so it's probably not very good for you so we're going to wear some protective equipment let's go in anticipation of laying down some slick sand, we got to prep the surface. So, um, and I kind of bounce all over the place. A lot of us have automotive ADHD. I can't seem to stay on one task. I think I'm learning that I have about 20 hours of usefulness on a task, and then I'm kind of done with it. So, if this, if the bodywork on this thing is going to take like 30 hours, I'm already done 10 hours ago, um, and I think. What I need to do is work on smaller projects or take bigger breaks or something so I can take a break from it. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, you saw me with my crazy slide hammer, which you can still see on the floor. That's just pulling the fender out to try and match the doors. You can see a little bit of filler on the leading edge of the, f of the driver's door. That is from the door stopper puller openator holder backinator thing that had broken with the previous owner and the door opened so far kissed the cowl panel and the fender and creased it pretty dramatically so i'm trying to make that nice on the back here we've got little pieces of masking tape to help me find the defects and here you can see the shiny high spots where my weld seam is i fabricated the bottom half of these doors because issues um, using vacuum cleaner to try to suck up the filler but discovered you know that that just sucked so I stopped using it and sanding away um, I'm learning a little bit with this is everything that you apply to the body helps to hide some of your mistakes so a thick coat of primer helps to fill in some defects the slick sand will fill in some defects and I'm using uh, PPG's Dell Fleet uh, paint which is a, a fairly high solids paint and it covers a lot of defects quite nice I built a spray booth you'll probably see a link above that leads to the video on how to build a spray booth which is closely related to my second video of don't build a spray booth but you can because you too could enjoy the fume laden world that's cheaper than going to a Grateful Dead concert laying down the slick sand um, this stuff has like a 30 minute pot life, so you got a boogie. The stuff was curing in the gun within 10 minutes of spraying, so you really need to move. I could, you gotta, you gotta mix the slick sand with the hardener by weight, and my scale could only weigh half uh, the gun cup at a time so it was a, a interesting thing and every like every time i go to fill the cup i had to, to spray acetone through it and clean it all out because oh my gosh this stuff is bizarre however looking back on it uh, being able to sand out your defects so well with a flick a slick a flick there's got to be a tongue twister there a there's lots of it, so sand, and it, it actually does a pretty good job of hiding all your mistakes. I'm really quite pleased with the level of not visible defects that I have. At least I can't see them. 
Also, you learn just how horrible these trucks fit when you're trying to piece it all together. Like the door doesn't fit the cab and the cowl corners don't fit the cowl and the fender doesn't fit anything and the hood's not. It's just, oh, it goes on. Uh, side of the doors, I had picked up, I think it's a three-foot sanding block. It's intended for marine. Uh, I forget the name of this, but this company does a lot of uh, sanding block stuff. And uh, that helped to get some of the bizarre shapes of these doors a little more agreeable. I knew where my defects were. Hey, get off the phone! I knew where my defects were. Um, so I laid down more coats of slick sand or thicker coats, or I lingered longer, I guess, with the slick sand in the areas where I knew I had defects. I used the French wheel to form the bottom half of these doors, and I'm not really that good at it, so there was some interesting profiling done on the skins, so I put quite a bit of slick sand on the door so I could shape it acceptably, and it, it, it hid a lot of my mistakes pretty well. So that's, that's kind of nice to see. And then back to the paint stick for smaller areas. On the doors, because I was worried about it looking yucky, I did put down some guide coat, which you just mist it on and let it dry, and then it, it kind of comes off. You can get this as a powder as well, but I do love my aerosols, so I, I like to spray that. Uh, and you'll see I put down a little bit of epoxy. I think I went down to metal in a couple spots, or I added some filler, I can't remember. Then once you think you've kind of had enough of sanding, you're going to wipe the whole thing down and wax and grease remover. I use paper towel, fold it in half, and that gives me four surfaces of clean paper towel. And I wipe it and wipe it and wipe it and wipe it until the paper towel comes out clean. Then I move on to the next area. Uh, turns out sanding and this is kind of hard on my body. I, I wasn't quite expecting that quite as much as it did. Hi, I'm Greg Welwood. You might remember me from such episodes as If It Falls on the Floor, It Stays on the Floor. And... My hands won't stop tingling. I don't know what it is about this 1961 Chevy pickup that I'm working on, but oh my gosh, it is kicking my butt. And when my butt is being kicked hard enough, I want to introduce you to one of my favorite friends, Voltaren. Voltaren is a wonderful sauce that you can put on achy, sore muscles, of which I have plenty. I'm not sponsored by Voltaren, but Voltaren, if you're listening, I wouldn't mind some free samples. Because old man muscle comes with a price, and that price is painkillers. Now, back to the show. I have heard that slick sand doesn't always respond well to paint like an epoxy primer will, um, but you can put down a sealer instead of like hardcore epoxy. You can put down some sealer, which is just uh, epoxy primer with uh, a portion of reducer put into it. So I sprayed the whole thing in that. It's just another picture of me waving a spray gun all over everything and uh, mixing up paint. So here is the paint. It is pretty darn close to Ford Mustang Grabber Orange. And uh, if you are a professional painter and you're watching this, by all means, leave comments down below about everything that I did wrong, because I'm a complete noob and have no idea what I'm doing wrong until I'm done and then go, wow, that, that went wrong. Turns out, the when you're using a spray gun, and in this case, I'm using a DeVilbis uh, high volume, low pressure gun. I like the gun, but for whatever reason, it really seemed to spray uh, a lot of overspray. And on all the videos I saw of how to set up your spray gun, they pretty much all say set your uh, feed or your line pressure to whatever the gun rec recommends. And I set it to 23 PSI, but apparently my regulator's pooched and I trusted the regulator. So uh, it, it's hopefully thick enough that I can sand out a whack of defects. It's going to be okay. I don't build these for show. Honestly, I wash my vehicles once a year, whether I need it or not. Notice how the color changed. Um, this thing does not photo photograph consistently. In some cases, it's very yellow. Others, it's very orange. In this case, it looks like pumpkin spice vomit, and that's not the color I was looking for. But, uh, there we are, back to the retina burning orange. I like that. So I'm using an eighth inch 3M tape to mask off the outside. I did put a bit of seam sealer in the fender corners to make it a bit tidier, one of my pet peeves. Uh, fatten her up with a little bit more tape, 
We're going to mask the whole thing and spray down some white. In this case, I think I used a uh, touch-up gun. Yes, because I'm doing the part of the door jam. So I did like three coats in the do inside the doors, and then I'm spraying the outside. And I probably won't mention in the video that I was running out of paint, so I didn't do the top of the truck. I just did the sides of the cab and the front, and then picked up another quart of white paint when you weren't looking, and then sprayed the whole top with the Devilbus gun later on. Uh, but masked everything off so you wouldn't even notice. Shh, don't tell anybody. So the first coat of painting is usually your tack coat. Just give it a hint of color. And then I like to put two nice, reasonably wet and not runny, but I'm always surprised how runny they are, uh, wet coats on top. I always get runs. Uh, I don't know if you do. You probably don't. But I always seem to get runs. A nice way of getting rid of runs, which I might show in a video later on because i got lots of time for that. Put some filler over top and then sand through the filler. Who is that handsome man? Why, it's me. Oh, man. Well, I'm good looking. So, uh, I did the white, which you didn't see because the camera's at the back. Now the camera's at the front. And spraying the black on the inside. Uh, again, with my little touch-up gun. I really like that touch-up gun. So, uh, tack coat. Uh, and then on the back side, I'm spraying a plate that's holding the air compressors for the air ride. And then a second coat, and an, or well, a first wet coat, and then a second wet coat. And that should be enough to keep me and all the people I hang out with quiet. Ah, hey! This entrance is staged to make it look like I just finished spraying. We should talk about some of the things you're going to want when you're spraying paint on a vehicle. Obviously a gun. However, uh, safety is going to be kind of important. I strongly recommend some kind of a breathable air system or a supplied air system. This was pricey, but wow, it's a whole lot better than a charcoal mask. Uh, you want a head sock or a balaclava, not just for late night bank runs, but also for you're going to wear a lot of this paint and the shampoo isn't going to get all of it out. So get one of these. You're going to be happy for that. Take your wristwatch off or it's going to be wearing all the colors that you just sprayed and it may not come out of that either. Uh, you may want to wear bad clothes. Under these coveralls, I got paint on my socks, on my shorts, if I was wearing a shirt under here, I'd probably get, be getting paint on that too. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Clearly I don't have enough airflow in this thing. Speaking of which, not sure I would do this again. Mind you, eh, I certainly have a, no overspray in the shop to have to deal with. That's nice. You're going to go through a crap ton of this, both in cleaning your guns and everything else pertaining to everything you do in the shop. You're going to go through a crap ton of this. So you might as well invest in the company, get some stock, some options. But you're going to empty these. Here's what you can do. You're going to want some hearing protection. You're going to want some eye protection. You get these cool... No. You got a cool container for mixing your paints. Probably want to wait for the solvents to evaporate so it doesn't completely. But I'm a lucky man. You want to buy one of these pressurized sprayers. It kind of slows down how much lacquer thinner you go through. Um, or at least it makes it more convenient. Definitely for spraying your guns down. Oh look. I'm cleaning my lacquer thinner container with lacquer thinner. Oh my gosh, how does he do it? With surgical gloves, actually. Speaking of which, you want to protect your skin, so get some nitrile gloves. I can tell within seconds uh, when the lacquer thinner has started to dissolve these, which is usually within less than a minute of handling something with lacquer thinner. Uh, acetone dissolves these even quicker, smells nicer. So I, like an idiot, bought size extra large, which are actually kind of nice because I can quickly change the gloves on and off because I'm going to go through a lot of gloves. Just buy a big box of whatever your favorite on-sale gloves are. You want to keep a data book of all the stuff you're spraying. 
Uh, I've got one for the primers that I'm using. I've got my lacquer, no, uh, epoxy primer. We've got the slick sand. I've been spraying a Dell Fleet Essential paint on this 61 Chevy pickup. I got a uh, Raptor bed liner, resins for doing fiberglass. It, gets, it has all the information you need to know. How to mix it, how to use it, what tip sizes, what pressures, what pot life. That's handy. I have three spray guns that I like to use. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I, I've never sprayed the super expensive guns, but the cheap Harbor Freight Princess Auto ones are pretty good. This one is a DeVilbis finish line gun. I think I paid about 300 bucks for it. It sprays really nice. I quite like it. It came with, I think, a 1.2, a 1.5, and a 1.8 tip on it, which allows you to spray pretty much everything you're gonna be spraying. Um, I like it. It's pretty handy. Um, it served me well on a lot of the spraying I've done. On the 61 Chevy, I sprayed slick sand, which is thick. Uh, this is from Princess Auto. It comes with a 2.3 millimeter tip. Uh, it will spray um, a lot of material. Um, this was green. It looked like it was green anodized. Turned out it was just green lacquer, uh, which dissolved the first time I cleaned this. So now it's just bare aluminum. Uh, but I think I paid 40 bucks for this on sale. Sprays fine, sprays thick. Good for primers, high build primers. This one's my favorite. It's just a touch up gun from Princess Auto. Uh, a couple things, make sure the tips are done up really tight in here because it tends to uh, lose its spray pattern pretty easily. And I just recently had the cap not fully thread and seal. Uh, so when they go on sale, I buy one or two and run them till they die. But for little bits and touch up stuff, I like this. Not a lot of overspray. Comes with a 0.8 tip, uh, but I did take an older tip and drill it out to 1.2, I think. I just haven't had the guts to try it yet. It'll probably go through a lot of material. So I do like this one. These on sale for about 40 or 50 bucks. You're gonna go through a lot of paper towel for wiping stuff down. This is just a piece of tube. And I thickened it up because this thing would unroll itself. It's just some squishy foam. It's nice to be able to just take off a piece of paper towel and use it for cleaning whatever it is you need to clean. You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a bunch of paint filters, paint strainers. You pour the paint through this into your paint gun. Uh, there's a fancy stand that you can use to hold all of this. I'll show you a picture of that. Um, I bought these off of Amazon. It turns out they're just a little bit small, but they do filter and that works good. And I take back my enthusiasm for masking vehicles. This wasn't a whole lot of fun. Uh, I've got a bunch of tapes here. I find I tend to use 3M tape the most, although I'm always disappointed at the most inopportune times. You're gonna want a bunch of different thicknesses. I use this little eighth inch, eighth inch, three quarter, one inch, inch and a half, and three eighths. Probably could use a quarter inch in there as well. Just different thicknesses make it around corners a little bit easier. You'll find the tape sticks to everything but what you want it to. It'll stick to your gloves. It'll stick to itself on the roll and you can't peel it off and then it won't stick to the vehicle. Ugh. Um, also, tuck tape used for your vapor barrier or yeah, vapor barrier and house wrap. This will stick to everything. So when things go wrong and you frantically need to stick something together, this is the stuff to use. You want to use some of that. Uh, I like this. Don't like the smell of it though. Oh, that looks nice. I like looking at my projects in pictures. I don't see the defects when I'm looking at the pictures. That's nice. Hi, I'm Greg Wellwood. You might remember me from such episodes as Daddy's back doesn't bend anymore and everything hurts. I don't know what it is about working on this 61 Chevy pickup, but oh my gosh, it's kicking my butt. And sometimes I need a little bit of help with ibuprofen, this case coming from Advil. I'm not sponsored by Advil or ibuprofen, but if you're listening, I wouldn't mind some free samples. Because old man muscle comes with a price, and that price is painkillers. Now, back to the show. All right, now, when I did the spray booth in my head, because I only have 33 feet across my shop at the front there, in my head I would 
the plan was I would build a booth, spray the cab, and then push the truck all the way back till it hit the wall, and then shorten the spray booth, which I'm in the process of doing. You'll see the black on the end wall of the spray booth. That was a failed attempt at trying to change the airflow using um, landscaping fabric, which was used by Trev on Trev's blog, and it seemed to work for him. But I think I might have chosen the wrong uh, fabric because this stuff really didn't flow all that well. The furnace filters were good, um, but not on the exit side of things. They plugged up pretty quick. Going to use some 2K seam sealer to attach the bed stake pocket tie down reinforcements that I made, which will go inside the stake pockets. I'm going to use this to glue it together, a magnet on a stick to place it, and then we'll attach it. Hopefully, it cures in the right spot. And then I'll have tie downs inside the bed, which is cool. Trick with this when you get them, this thing needs to be removed, and the instructions are a little bit vague on how to do it. So you take this and you smack it hard enough to hit your glue gun. You smack it really hard on the counter and that pops this plug in into the container. And then uh, when you're finished gooping what you want to do, you can take off the swizzle stick and push this plug back in. If you look at the end, there's like uh, round and square and it matches the round and square that you see on the container so you don't glue the lid on. The swizzle sticks, you can't really save these. I mean, you can try and get that all out of there. I'll give you a nickel if you can suck that out of there. Um, but this, just throw it away. They give you two in the container. Uh, I tend to hang on to the ones I don't use because I'm going to use it at some point. Now, back in the bad old days, we had nothing to tie stuff down to, or at least small loads. And one of the best things to do is to live in a house on a corner, right, where there's a big bump. Because then cars and trucks come over, they hit the bump on the turn, stuff flies out of the back of the vehicle. You pick it up, Christmas is early, saves you money in the long run. Um, so, in, But in this case, I really want some tie-downs. I've put them in my 77 Chevy. In this case, I just had these big plates, uh, threaded holes. This should work to put it all together. I'm hoping. And I, with the seam sealer, 2K seam sealer, hooking this stuff up, uh, locking it into place, I should have uh, a good way of tying stuff down. I don't want to use the bolts in the bottom that hold the, like bolt the, the bed sides to the floor because um, do you, I want to make sure I can carry a 4x8 sheet of whatever and I need the room that I can. All right, getting ready to spray some more epoxy primer on the bed and all of its related paraphernalia which is a fancy word, which means stuff. But you sound smart when you're using polysyllabic vocabulary. Um, this should have been just like everything else, except um, at probably the least opportune moment, like, well, here, which was followed with a whole bunch of <laughs> which really just added to my lack of love for bodywork, really, if I'm honest. Um, you know, I yeah, sometimes have these days where things go wrong, like everything you touch falls and everything tips over and everything falls just out of reach and something snags and something breaks and you just want to say, screw this and go back inside the house, drink a cup of coffee and watch some clouds go by. That was my summer. Pretty much everything that could go wrong went wrong. But I'm making it sound sunshine and lollipop so that we don't get all irritated and go, oh, that guy's such an angry man. Well, I am, kind of. So we'll look at the sunshine and the lollipops. I'm laying down some Raptor, kind of a fun little uh, bed liner, black in this case, and I'm just kind of hitting up the skid strips on the bed, which should look really good with the bed floor whenever I get that in. And I have the bed up on end because... It's really hard to have, or for me, it's really hard to get a, a nice, smooth, kind of painted underside of the bed so it feels nice to your hands. If you've ever reached uh, for the, the bed rails on these and you feel the scummy, scuffy, gross underside, it just really needs a good coat of paint. Turns out that's hard to do, or at least hard for me to do. So I sprayed the cowl and the steps on the fenders, um, 
The steps were shortened along with the bed. You can see the nice little fuel filler on the top of the back fender there because I moved it out of the cab. And you need to wait a few minutes uh, between your coats to make it all kind of set up and cure reasonably well. These are, there's recoat windows which you need to cover. Eh? Eh? Oh yeah! So while I'm there reconsidering my life choices, um, the paint's curing. Technically, you're watching a video of paint drying. And then, once you've reminisced on things you probably should have done with your life, uh, you got to keep going. And that's actually one of my irritants with this painting is is I can't just stop. Once you've got the stuff mixed or you got the stuff spraying, you, you have that window of time and you have to deal with it. Uh, I don't really enjoy that. When I'm having a bad day, I just want to go, you know what? Screw this. And then I can go inside, drink a cup of coffee and watch some clouds go by or do something else with my life other than bodywork. But I can't because stuff is going and stuff has to be done. And if I'm going to do two-tone, I have to go back on this. So, blah. So I got the bed on my little rolling stand again, which is pretty handy. Move stuff around. And uh, same thing as usual. Uh, well, kind of a tack coat. Two good wet coats. Um, try your best to put the wet, uh, put the paint down wet enough that it dries glossy, but not so wet that it runs all over the place. I have a little bit of both happening in there. Nevertheless, I'm going to sand it all out and make it beautiful, because who doesn't want beautiful? Me, apparently. So putting the bed together, we, I didn't show spraying the... A uh, tintable raptor in there. I had it tinted the same color as the body because then with the bed liner inside the bed I can hide all manner of defect that's going on in there um, which I appreciate immensely. The bed wood is Trex. Uh, I forget the name of it but it's been discontinued so it doesn't matter. Uh, and you can see the extensions on this one bed brace at the front because the bed floor has been raised four inches because of the notch in the frame on the truck. I still want to use it as a truck, you know, it's not a show car here, we've got to make it somewhat usable. So we're putting it all together, and then we're going to carry this thing over with the engine crane, set it in place. This is where it's nice to have friends, if only I had some. So, we got her all back together, sitting on wheels, uh, looking pretty good, I think. I think I like the color. I'm committed, I'm not going to change it. Initially, I chose to spray the cab assembled so that the paint would lay down the same on all the panels, but honestly you're spraying a panel at a time even though it's assembled. I think it would be uh, easier for me to deal with just one panel at a time. Uh, it's more manageable rather than doing the whole cab and trying to get all of that done. I can, I can put more effort into doing a better job with a smaller piece rather than everything. Uh, but it made sense at the time reasons. Uh, so here it is. There are some defects I'll still need to sand out. We'll see if we still have paint. Uh, but other than that, it's a driver, not a show car. It's built to my level of skill at this point, and I kind of reached my tolerance for being able to deal with a project of this magnitude. Next time I do a project, I'll be coming in with that skill, and then I can add to it. But I'm tired of this. I don't really care for bodywork. <clears throat> but I think it looks pretty good. Uh, still have to do the interior, do the wiring, uh, finish the cooling system, hook up the AC, finish the air ride, finish the bed floor. I've got a rear bumper coming, got to put the front bumper and grill on, got to wipe all the overspray off of the motor because I didn't, uh, didn't uh, mask that particularly well. Glass has to go in, that's coming up soon. Windshield is on order. Doors have to be reassembled. Uh, still a ton of work, so we're looking for one more year. Uh, hopefully be done by the end of next summer. As it is, it's uh, two weeks till school starts. I'm trying to just relax, unplug, and not work so hard so that I'm fresh for the school year. Uh, but sure as shooting, we'll get back to this again. So there it is. Hope you liked it. This is my hobby. I'm just inviting you into it. 
Hope you enjoy it. If you got questions, comments, hate mail, whatever, leave it down below in the comment section below. Ring the bell, subscribe, make your own videos, and share them with the world. As always, thanks for coming out. Take care.